Okay, uh, hello everyone. Um, my name is Camilla. This is my colleague uh, Almedin. Uh, we are from uh, CQS Partner, which is the uh, H uh, HR and ICT provider for Norway's largest regional healthcare trust, which means all the hospitals in the southeast uh, of Norway. Uh, in CQS Partner, we are 1,400 employees, and we serve 77,000 users in in uh, the rest of the hospitals in the in the southeast of Norway. Uh, these are clinical professionals, so doctors and nurses, and they uh, mostly don't care or have a lot of um, a lot of um, they don't want to think about passwords. They don't. They just want everything to work. So this fall, we have implemented a new voluntary password policy for all CQS Partner employees. This policy allows uh, our users to, to have password never expires on their accounts, uh, which is recommended by uh, NIST and also the Norwegian Security uh, Authority. And it's, it, it's, it's kind of a... Oh, sorry. It is kind of a, of a an, an recommendation from security experts uh, all over these days. I'm sorry. Yes. In this presentation, we will take you through uh, our new policy and the changes we made. We will go through the process of implementation and the challenges uh, we met during this process. Uh, for now, this scope is only for uh, the CQS partner employees, not uh, the rest of the 77,000 uh, users in Health um, we, we We're starting with ourselves, and then we hopefully will be able to, to uh, expand this uh, later on. Uh, yes, uh, today... Our policy uh, states that you, you must change it every 90 days, and you have, eight, you have this standard password policy that, that it, it requires eight signs, and, and you must change it every 90 days. And it creates a lot of frustration for, for everyone, because when you have to change your password every 90 days, you, you, you end up with bad passwords. You, you change the number, or you, you change the capital of the, of the word that you use. Uh, so, so we have we have uh, a lot of improvement to to go on uh, on passwords uh, in our uh, organizations. Uh, yeah, so we, we'll talk you through what our policy is, why we implemented this, uh, how we did it, uh, and and last the challenges that we faced uh, while doing it. Uh, so first of all, uh, we have removed the requirement for users to periodically change their passwords. Uh, which is recommended by NIST 2017. Uh, we have set the minimum character length to 16 characters, which is a bit more than the minimum requirement by NIST. Um, we will be doing offline password audit uh, to identify uh, weak or compromised passwords. Uh, one thing that we've decided uh, that we did decided to, to uh, keep was the password complexity. Um, although it is recommended to remove it. Uh, the main reason for that was that we have previously spent a lot of time to communicate the importance of password complexity to our users, and they have slowly learned to embrace things such as special characters. We were afraid that if we now went out and told them that we no longer believe in password complexity, we would be faced with a lot of frustration among our users. So. The choice to keep the complexity is, is not so much of a security question as it is about communication to our end users. Uh, in addition, we do have a lot of authentication solutions outside of Active Directory that don't have single sign-on, um, where keeping cap password complexity makes more sense. So, so it is a requirement that we might remove in the future, but for now we, we've decided to keep it. Uh, and finally, this is a voluntary policy, so users have to themselves make the choice to transition. Uh, it is, as Camilla mentioned, only for CQS Partner employees, and uh, it is only for non-admin accounts. Um, yeah, this was also a good place to, to apply the kitten rule. Um, 
Now, the thing about Googling kittens is that it is very easy to get carried away, so yeah. Uh, so why, why did we do this? Um, our main reason for doing it was to get stronger passwords. Uh, as Camilla mentioned, we have a lot of weak passwords. We, we're fully aware of this. There is very little variation, and they're very easy to guess. Uh, the, the picture to the right here, it shows... Um, uh, we got permission to show the results from a penetration test that was done uh, a few years back. Uh, and it shows the 15 most used passwords. Uh, so for those of you who don't speak Norwegian, uh, the top four are winter and year. Then we have Norway, Christmas, uh, December, summer, January, summer, November, Wednesday. So do you see a pattern here? Um, yeah, um, weak passwords, they, they are a vulnerability to our infrastructure, and because we work in the healthcare uh, sector, uh, <laughs> this? <Yeah. laughs> uh, we do work with infrastructure critical to society, so it is important for us to, to get stronger passwords. Uh, in addition, we do hope that this policy will um, increase user experience. Uh, by not forcing users to constantly change their passwords and, and have to come up with new ones or add a number or season. Uh, and, um, and, and finally, uh, we do have a lot of customer support uh, inquiries and, and quite a few of them are password related. So we do hope by, again, um, implementing password never expires that we will reduce uh, this number as well. Um, yeah, so uh, we started out with this uh, this summer. Our CSO was very eager and very uh, very pumped that we would get this out. Uh, and we also had our management uh, on board, which always uh, always helps uh, and makes uh, everything so much easier for <laughs> for us. So uh, since we are a governmental organization, we have a lot of policy and processes that needs to be followed before making any changes. Uh, the first thing is we have to make uh, significant documentation of any change that we uh, are doing. Uh, if this change implies any, any uh, potential new information security risks or vulner vul vulnerabilities, uh, we have to do a risk assessment of this as well. Um, after this, we, we get our technicians to set things up uh, the way we we tell them to, <laughs> and, uh, and they can test and do the things that they uh, do uh, to make sure that the, the policy works as it, uh, as it should. So that's what we did. Uh, we got the policy in place, um, and, uh, and we tested it, and it, it worked uh, great. Um, the risk part of the implementation of the process was not as great as the, the risks or the, or the privacy parts uh, of the password testing part of the solution. So, so um, the main risks with implementing this new policy was, can uh, users misuse this in any, uh, in any way? Can users keep bad passwords and never change them? That would be uh, a scenario we could see happen. And, also, also things that we set up monitoring and alerting for. Uh, so we set up monitoring for to find uh, these these uh, scenarios. Um, we had uh, alerts where users had a password that's uh, older than the membership to this new policy, uh, and we have until now we've had like three three uh, hits on this one. So. Somebody somewhere has not done something right. They have not followed the process that we've told them to do, and we have uh, managed these uh, cases, of course. But uh, three cases—that's not so much. We we've handled it. Uh, we've also set up monitoring for for uh, users that's not, not supposed to take this uh, this policy in use or or end users that belongs to any other, uh, that does not belong to CQ's partner, you could say. If, if there's users that works at a, a hospital, it should not be here. So, so it's uh, to, to have some, some control over, over uh, who, who has this policy by, by now. Uh, 
we also made a lot of end user documentation and made sure that our help desk team uh, knew how to handle these cases. Uh, so we we made made the processes and, and uh, in instructions, and we published it on our ISMS to to make sure that everybody could reach it and everybody had uh, had knowledge uh, of of this. Uh, yes, and, and meanwhile uh, we also started to look up on how to do the offline password audit. Um, we talked to our AD guys and asked them how they would propose that we get the hashes out uh, for the testing of the, of the passwords. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, uh, I'll explain now how we set up our, our offline password audit. Uh, I just have to mention one thing first, is that when we were tasked with this, we, we had zero experience with password cracking. Uh, and we are not technical people either, so we kind of made the best out of it. Uh, this is mainly based on Googling and reading certain forums. Uh, we wanted to set up a solution that is secure uh, and, and low cost. Uh, so the first thing we did is we set up a virtual server in our secure network zone. Uh, we extract the hashes by running a PowerShell script that connects to the domain controller and uh, uh, gets the, the hashes. Uh, then we do the offline password audit, which is mainly two steps. One is to compare it to previously breached passwords, which uh, for that we use the have I been pwned list and, uh, of NTLM hashes. Uh, and then the second part is the dictionary. It is a dictionary attack. Uh, we did create a dictionary which contains the most common uh, words in a region, um, names, pet names, uh, sports teams, movies, places, days, months, season, uh, etc., and a bunch of uh, context-specific words. Uh, we then combine this uh, uh, with a world wrangling tool. Uh, for this, we mainly use Prince Processor, uh, but we also use Diceware and, and Combinator to get a few uh, different combinations. And then we run this through the Corey Logic rule set as well as a few uh, custom rules. Um, if uh, a hash is found to be compromised, then the way we set up the process is we do alert a different department. They will then match the username to that hash and alert the user as well as get them to change uh, the password. Uh, now, there is a reason we've set this up that way, uh, which kind of brings us to, to uh, some of the challenges. Because um, originally, when we, when we created the PowerShell script, we wanted to extract both the usernames and passwords, and then if, if we found a password, we would just alert the user ourselves. Uh, however, uh, there was raised privacy issues uh, surrounding this because we would potentially know uh, our colleague's uh, username and clear text password, um, um, which means we would have credentials to their accounts, at least for, for uh, a little bit of time, and, and we heard about password reuse is very common as well. Uh, so because of this, we decided to only extract the hashes, and then if a hash is compromised, we will let the other department know which hash it is. They will find out who the user is and then alert the user. This way, we, we might know a password. We don't know who it belongs to. Uh, they will know that a user's uh, hash has been compromised. They won't know what it is. Um, so that was a, a way. Uh, the result is kind of a bit more tedious process, but one that takes privacy into consideration. Uh, the other major thing that we encountered with doing uh, password auditing uh, was uh, whether it is legal or not. Uh, if we do password audit on our employees, are we in violation with Norwegian privacy laws or even, as someone suggested, the Norwegian penal code? Um, uh, what we did in terms of that is we had uh, a consultation with the, the Norwegian Data Protection Authority uh, to get their views on this. Um, they said that they are skeptical uh, of such a practice uh, because uh, passwords may contain sensitive information. Uh, now, while we agree that that might be the case, uh, we believe that that is generally not the case because when we talk to our users about using passphrases, we, we didn't actually envision things like, I was diagnosed with something in, in 2016. Uh, but we still want to take privacy seriously, so that's why we've, uh, uh, we've uh, 
done several measures to reduce the impact. Uh, one thing is we've made the policy voluntary. Uh, the other thing is we are, we've been very transparent throughout the whole process about the fact that we will do password cracking. And uh, also by ensuring that we don't have the link between usernames and passwords uh, should a hash be compromised. Um, a cup, well, in, I think it's on, in October uh, of this year, the Norwegian National Security Authority also came up with their password guidelines, and, and one of the recommendations was that companies establish uh, a procedure to identify uh, weak or uh, compromised passwords. Um, so, for now, uh, based on uh, what we've done and, and the research we've done, we do, we are confident that what we're doing is legal, but at the same time we are aware of the fact that the Data Protection Authority might do a formal review and, and come to a different conclusion. So it is something that we have included in our risk assessment. Um, yeah, and, and uh, just a final note uh, that until we do get uh, multi-factor authentication uh, across all of our services, uh, weak passwords are, are not so much a privacy issue for our employees as they are for the patients, because the patient journal systems are being protected by these passwords, and weak passwords are a threat to the integrity and, and confidentiality of this information. Mm, yes. Uh, we, while implementing this, we also had some issues with system integrations. Uh, that, that we did not uh, foresee, uh, you can say. Um, the, f the first problem we met was the password reset tool that we use. Uh, it did not, uh, you could not change the passwords with this tool, so you had to, they had to do some uh, quick fix, and they fixed it, and it was no problem. Uh, one of the bigger problems we met was uh, with one of our patient, electronic patient journal systems. Uh, who did not support uh, passwords which uh, over over 14 characters? So none of the users who took this this new password policy uh, to use could ha could <laughs> log into this uh, patient journal system. So that's still something they are working on. I think they've found a solution now, but it's not rolled out every everywhere. Uh, we have to do this while they are doing this uh, bigger update on the system. Um, well, well, this is two applications that we, we've had issues with uh, while we implemented this for Circus Partner. We could, it could be safe to, uh, to assume that uh, any expan expanding of this policy to the entire health trust would, uh, would imply that we would have a lot of more uh, applications that would have trouble with this. So, so we have, we have like 25,000 applications, and a lot of them are AD integrated, so, so we, we, uh, we have to do a lot of testing uh, with these applications before we can do any, any uh, rollouts to the, the uh, regional healthcare trust. And also there is uh, the, the uh, issue of getting people to accepting this transition. We've t uh, heard good talks yesterday about, uh, about the human side of this uh, password, password um, use. Uh, we, see, we see this new policy, policy as very user-friendly, but <laughs> we have actually had some people complaining that oh, it takes so much time typing in the passwords. 16 signs is way too much. I need, I need, an, I need a you know the time code that you make your when you when you log your work hours i need w i need one for f password typing like <laughs> funny <laughs> um, and they also think it's impossible to remember such long passwords so um, yeah we have a way to go there um, it is still an issue that passwords are being reused uh, as we heard yesterday uh, if we crack uh, one of our colleagues' passwords, we would potentially have access to their private accounts as well. And this is a very likely scenario. Um, 
Yeah, and, and also the issue that Almadine says that the password may mat maintain, maintain the sensitive information about uh, the user it inquires. Uh, we also have the problem of reaching out to our end users. We have our intranet where we, uh, where we go out and we inform, but not everybody reads the intranet. And we've sent out uh, emails to leaders and we've sent out newsletters, but people don't read those. So we still have a lot of people uh, that we haven't reached out to yet. So we, we just have to keep on talking about this uh, internally and we have to get people to understand why this is such a good idea. And also, I would just like to say, um, a lot of people here are talking about password gen generators. generators. And for in our business, uh, you know, uh, you have to you log on such so many times a day, and these password generators mm, oftenly they, they very often make very complex and long passwords that you cannot remember. So, when you're a doctor and you're sitting at the ICU and you're logging into this electronic patient, uh, this <laughs> journal system, you don't want to find your password safe on your mobile phone or somewhere to get the password to type into the computer. It, it's not use. It doesn't work that way today. So we still have a way to go. Uh, but our users, they need passwords they can remember. Um, that's the way it is today. Uh, and we would like, we're working f uh, towards a solution for MFA, but not there yet. Uh, this is like a low-hanging fruit. This is something we can do to better security and better user experience uh, without any big costs and without any, actually, <laughs> it's not so hard. We can do this ourselves. We don't need big projects or very big money to, to make this work. So, so we're, it's, not, it's not the end of our password journey, but uh, <laughs> it's a step on the way. <laughs>